Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I have a question and answer video for you where I'm gonna answer a question that was sent in by one of my viewers. So as always, you can put in the comments below any questions you have you'd like to see me answer, and I always look through these before each of these videos, and uh, today I'm gonna answer a question that came from Jay, and Jay left this on my Patreon page. So Jay, first up, thank you very much for your support on Patreon, I really appreciate it, and I hope you're digging those printable lessons I'm making, okay? So Jay's question has to do with a capo. So he asks, uh, do you have any videos in the archives that show you how to put a capo to use? The best type of capo? Demos on how a particular song changes once you apply a capo? Um, or is the idea of a capo so simple I'm overthinking it? I've been playing a little over a year and have never actually put one to use. So that's a great question, Jay. Thank you very much for asking and um, I'm happy to talk about it. So. In this video, I'm gonna keep it super, super simple. I'm not gonna get into complex music theory because I started overthinking this um, immediately and, and wanting to teach all about how to, you know, modulate songs and turn them to different keys and use a capo to do all this crazy stuff. I'll save those for later videos. This one's gonna be just like no theory, very simple, straightforward stuff. Okay, so first up, I don't think anyone needs a capo. I think you can totally get by without a capo if you're a guitarist, right? But that said, if you're playing guitar and you've been playing for a year and you've gotten over the hump of, you know, that, that first couple of weeks, which is usually what's gonna stop most people, I totally think it's worth the investment because for five, 10, 15, 20 bucks, however much you wanna pay, um, I think these things last. So capos are like a key that you can use to unlock many, many, many doors that are gonna appear in front of you as a guitarist, right? And if there's a song you wanna play or an artist you wanna play with, um, or a, you know, a fellow human who you wanna play with and, and a capo is needed, it's great to have one. So I totally recommend it. If you can swing it, um, put the money in. I've been using this one. I don't remember where I got it, but it's, um, I've, it's the only good capo I've ever had. And I've had this for probably 15 years and it works just fine. I had a friend who had one that was more of a clip-on and you had to like do a latch or something. That one always bugged me. So I recommend like get one that's just easy to just put on there. And it's super simple. You just kind of plop it on. You want to make sure that you're not bending any of the strings too much. And you always can tune it after you put it on. That's sort of a, a general piece of advice I usually see. I don't really do that a lot of the time. But anyway, a capo, uh, totally worth getting if you don't have one yet. Um, spend a few extra bucks. You don't need to go crazy, but I, I think they will last you and they'll open up a lot of doors, as I said. Now, let's talk about sort of how they work and the main ideas about why you should get one. So I've been thinking a lot about this since I read your question. I think the number one reason I would get a capo is if there is a song that you want to play by a certain artist and that artist is using a capo uh, and you want to play along with the artist, the capo is just great for you to have because you can put the capo on and then play using the same chords as that artist and you'll be able to sound exactly in the same key as them. And that's just really important because I think that's a great way to learn. And this might come down to personal taste. I know for me, I like to play the songs by my favorite artists and a great way that I like to practice those songs is to put the song on in the background and just pick up my guitar, figure out what the chords are, just sort of approach it slow, but kind of get in there, play with them, eventually work on my strumming. And it just sounds better if you're in the same exact key as them, okay? Now I will say, if there is a song that uses a capo that you want to play, say like, I'll use Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles, because it's such a, such a classic song. So that song uses capo in the seventh fret, okay? And it's in D, you know. Okay, so that's exactly how George Harrison or whoever is playing the guitar in that song plays it, right? It's seventh fret, it's using chords in the, in the key of D, and that's, that's what it sounds like, right? But the thing is, is you could play that song without a capo. You could take the capo off and play the same exact chords, right? The same exact tabs, and it's still gonna be recognizable as Here Comes the Sun, listen. it is much lower in pitch, right? So it's, there was obviously a difference between what I played down here and what I played up there. But they're still, they still are recognizable as that song and they still have the same like shape of a song, right? People are gonna basically turn their heads if they hear that and be like, oh, that's Here Comes the Sun. So I say all this just to let you know that having a capo is nice because it lets you be in the same key, right? But if you don't have a capo, you can still learn a song. You're just gonna be in a different sort of pitch, right? A different key, like to your ear and, it, and you can't play along with the artist, right? Okay, so another reason you might want a capo is to basically let it help you tweak your vocal range if your goal is to sing along with a song and put it in a range that's comfortable for your voice, okay? So that might not be something you're interested in, but here's an example. Say I'm playing Folsom Prison Blues, right? And I'm playing it open E, or I'm playing it in the key of E, right? Standard tuning, so 
I hear that train a coming. This is the vocal range that I would use to play the song. Now, but say I want to bring it higher up in my vocal register. What you can do is add a capo on. I'll put it in the third fret here, and I'm going to use the same chords, and it's going to bump the pitch up by a little bit. I hear that train a coming. This rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. Or I could go up to capo 7 and really stress my voice out because I'm not going to be able to sing that high, maybe. I hear that train a coming. It's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom Prison. You get the idea there, right? I'm not doing that to show you my singing voice, but I'm just showing you that you can learn one song as far as the chord shapes go. And then by adding a capo higher and higher, it will let you use the same chord shapes, but you're gonna increase the pitch of the, of the music and that'll let you sing higher and higher. So sometimes like a song is too low to sing and you wanna bring it up, right? Up, 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 right? So that's one reason a capo can be helpful too. So it can uh, improve your, the range of singing, okay? Uh, the next reason I would say a capo is helpful, of the ones I wrote down, is it can help with some of these like stretches you want to do. So I recently did a video where I was talking about some of these stretches you might want to practice with a D. Okay, so a D major and putting your pinky, right, on the third string and on the fourth string. Right, this is a hard stretch that I had to practice a lot. But if you use a capo, what it does is, because the frets up here are thinner, look how thin they are, like this fret right here is this thin. But you know, the over here it's it's a uh, it's quite a bit thicker, and it actually makes a big difference. So if I put my capo on the seventh fret, and I was to do the same thing, this is just so much easier for my pinky because it's it's less stretching, and it's just easier for me to to focus on getting the right notes. And then once I master that, I could lower the capo a little bit. That would make the frets a little bit wider, and it would be a little bit harder, but I could just use what I've learned and, and get better. And then eventually I could do the same thing with no capo, right? And for bar chords, this is actually something that was helpful for me. This is the next reason, is that with a capo on, it feels like the action of the guitar, which is like the distance of the strings to the frets. It's, um, it's easier to push these strings down. So playing an F right here, I find a lot easier. So I'm just capo on the seventh fret, or, or what is this? Yeah, seventh fret, I'm doing an F. This, to me, feels a lot easier to do than it would to do this F. Because this F, it's just you're pushing the strings down further, the frets are farther away. So that's another reason why a capo can be good. Just getting your sort of muscles, uh, releasing the, um, or lowering the, the amount of work your muscles have to do to play a lot of bar, difficult bar chords. And then the final thing I wrote down here is a capo can be helpful just to change up the sound of something. Like say you're in a real good groove where you're playing like A and D. And you're just like, you're loving, you know, maybe you're practicing your A sus twos, your D sus twos, and sus fours, right? Now, you could do that all day, and maybe you'll get bored of it, but listen, if you put a capo up on the, say, the seventh fret, or eighth fret, or fifth fret, whatever, those same chords, listen to how they sound. great way to use chords you already know and just put a capo on and play them and it just sounds different, right? So it's a way just to add some diversity to things. One of my uh, favorite artists from a few years ago is called The Tallest Man on Earth. He would play a lot of his songs with a capo on like the fifth, seventh, ninth fret and he would really like use open normal chords but up here and it has this like tremendously distinct but really cool sound. Uh, check out the song King of Spain by The Tallest Man on Earth. I think he's in like D. And he's just doing some really cool stuff and he's like strumming away furiously and it's probably easy for him to do some of those stretches because the frets are thinner up here, but it also sounds so novel and so different. So I really recommend checking that out um, just to give you an, an example of that. Now, the last thing I'll say is you can indeed use a capo to do some sort of theory stuff and calculate like, hey, I want to play along with this song. Let's use the song Don't Stop Believing by Journey, right? It's, a, it's a, just a recognizable song. So that song is in the key of E, and you're gonna have, you know, just a small town girl, and you go to B, and then you go to C sharp minor, living in the lonely world, and then to A, right? So E to B. 
to C sharp minor to A. Now, these are chords that are not beginner friendly, right? You got bar chords, it's just gonna tire you out, but what you could do is use a capo and you could sort of play the song and be in the same key as the journey recording, but you're gonna change your chord shapes, okay? So here what I'm gonna do, for example, is put a capo in the second fret, and this is gonna lower every chord by one whole step. So an E would become a D. Then an A, and a B minor, and a G. Just a small time. Or you could go to capo four, and then the chords would become this. Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. You took a midnight train. Or you could do capo seven, and the chords would become this. You get the idea, right? So it actually gets harder. You notice that F sharp minor gave me a lot of trouble because there's a big stretch. But um, that wasn't the most exemplary playing of that song. But I just want to show you that whether I'm playing no capo or I'm doing capo two or capo four or capo seven, I'm sounding in the same pitch, right? My ears hear the same chords. And that's really helpful if you're playing along, say, with a, um, you know, a piano or just, again, the recording of that song. Where that song, if you put on the album on uh, a record or on Spotify or on YouTube, that's an E no matter what, right? And the only way to play along with it is to either use the chords that they're playing, which are, you know, E with no capo, or use a capo and you can use these different chords. Now, I'm gonna save this for a separate video where I talk about how to sort of use a capo to precisely match a different song by changing the, uh, by changing the chords. Um, it's a little bit more advanced or some theory involved. So I'll get to that another time. So Jay, thanks for watching. I hope that answered your question. And if you have any more questions about a capo, let me know. I will post the sort of model I got here in the description of this video. But uh, anyone else, if you have any questions about this video or any other questions you want to see me answer, please let me know in the comments. Remember, check out playsongnotes.com, my website, where all the other lessons I have, as, as well as these Q&A videos, can be found. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, pick up the guitar and play, and uh, send me your questions too. All right, bye-bye.